Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning to our Prevailing Word Christian Center family and friends. Welcome. And, and for all of those who are joining us today, I want to send a special happy Father's Day to our, our men. God bless you. And you know what? God our Father is the best dad. So if you emulate him, you fall in right in line of being one of the greats. So happy Father's Day to you men. Those of you who are men figures, or mentors, happy Father's Day. This morning, as we get ready for the word, I'm so excited to get back into the word with Pastor Mike Armine, our pastor. But before we do, I want to do some, some brief uh, announcements. If you would look and uh, go to our AB, pwcc.org website, there you will find all of our information of, and resources that we have pl placed on our website. You will also be able to leave a prayer request as well as see what the ministries here at Prevailing Word Christian Center are all about. At that place, you'll also be able to make a donation or leave your tithes and offering. So please visit our, our abpwcc.org website. We also have our Facebook page, and you are invited to join our Facebook group where we leave weekly inspirational notes, uh, motivational, and helpful things that will help you with your health, nutrition, your spiritual well-being, your emotional well-being, your physical well-being. We address all of those things on our Facebook page, as well as just giving you some nuggets to get you through the week. You're viewing us right now on our YouTube channel, which is great. Thank you so much. Do me a favor. Give us a thumbs up. Like us subscribe to our channel and then share it with someone else we want to make sure that we are getting the gospel of jesus christ across the nation across the globe and we want to do that by any means necessary to let people know that jesus christ is lord and that his word is alive and well well with that being said let's pray <clears throat> heavenly father we thank you for today Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your mercy. We come to honor you, Lord, and to come together to bring the word of God. Lord, open up our understanding that we might perceive and know how to operate your word the way you want us to. Thank you for the man of God. Use him mightily as he teaches us your truths. Father, we make sure to give you all the glory and all the praise and all of the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we say, amen. Amen. Now, you already know what I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to say it anyway. Bring me the book. Pastor Mike. Praise God. Praise God for another day, another opportunity for us to get into God's amen. uncompromising word. Amen. Well, we, we won't have an opening for you this morning but it's forthcoming, amen, uh, that you can uh, see online. But today we're going to get into a subject a little bit different from uh, recreating the human mind. And we want to talk, if we can, are we there yet? And the question, of course, came up. If many of you have seen uh, the movie, um, Are We There Yet? Uh, it was a family, and they were actually trying to get to a location and as they were trying to get to the location the kids kept saying are we there yet are we there yet are we there yet and, and it was a big 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 uh, scene with the of course the father figure saying uh, no we're not there no we're not there but I want you to grab your Bibles go to Matthew's gospel Matthew chapter 13 and let's look at verse 49 Matthew chapter 13 and look at verse 49 and even if you're having a viewing problem don't worry about it. just keep hearing the voice keep hearing the voice amen are you there Matthew chapter 13 verse 49 says so shall it be at the end of the world the angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. 
Then, of course, using the statement, the end of the world brings up a whole lot of anxieties and thoughts in the mind. What is that to look like and how is that to transpire? For all that is what is the end of the world, prior to this, Jesus taught the parable of the wheat and the tares. You probably have heard this before. And where he says the end of the world is when he will send his angels and to gather the elect at the time of the rapture. Now, there's, there's a lot of beliefs on will there be a rapture. Well, the Bible gives many indications about the rapture, and I won't go too deep on you, but he gives many in, in, indications. One is when we deal with a man by the name of Enoch, who is in the beginning of the Bible, and he walked with God, and the Bible says as he walked with God, he was not. We also have another indication of the rapture when we have Elijah who is caught up in the whirlwind and he did not see death. Well, the rapture really is a benefit to the believers, to those that really uh, follow Christ and, and make sure that they're living a life that's worthy to be captured. And so what is he really saying? For those who honor me and those who keep my word, I have a special benefit for you called the rapture. So with that being said, a lot of people, in my opinion, will not be going in the rapture because they would not contend to follow what Jesus said. It is a benefit. So for those of you that suffer through things and fight through this by faith and believe God, the Bible teaches there's a reward for you, and it's called the rapture. Now, the subject that we're going to deal with, are we there yet, has to deal with are certain prophecies been fulfilled or have certain prophecies not been fulfilled. If you're an unbeliever today, I need to say this to you, you may not agree with any of this, but the question is, have you received Christ? If you haven't, you're not there yet. That's pretty bad, but with all the indications that's happening in the world for the believer, you should be pulling closer to God and not further away from God. Why? Because you can see certain indications that's telling you that the soon a return of Jesus is imminent. And since it's imminent, then you want to prepare your life and live a life that qualifies you to be ready when he comes. Amen? We don't want to try to get ready. We want to be ready. Amen? In Matthew 13, 38, the field of the world, or the field is the world, and the good seed is the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Also in that same chapter, verse 39, the enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And, and this is important for just our understanding what is carrying on in this verse. Well, it goes on to give us a little bit more. This is the same as in the statement in the timeline of him in his presence, in God's presence. In other words, Jesus is going to show up. You see it in Matthew 24 verse 31 and also Mark 13 27 as Matthew chapter 24 verse 31 and also Mark 13 27 so you're going to have to go back through these because I'm going to give a lot of information and you're going to need to study this for yourself um, the world is the people the world is the people and when we say world we're talking about the, in, the, in the actual original word is the cosmos it's, it's, it's everything Okay, that's included. Uh, also, let me get this as well. It is not the destruction of the world, but the destruction of the wicked people at the return and the taking over of the world. So God is not going to get rid of his world, but he is going to destroy the things that are destroying his world. You'll, you'll understand that as we get through this more and more. The reading of the Bible in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 and Luke 17 and also chapter 21. Jesus says when, he, when we see these signs, this generation shall not pass away. So the generation alive, when these signs appear, will not 
grow old and die before the end of the world. Now, this is, this is a strong, strong statement that Jesus is making. But a lot of this has to do with futuristic. You got you to gotta watch the Bible. Sometimes reading the Bible, God is not apparently talking about at this exact time. But because he's so used to speaking eternally for natural-minded people, it doesn't always make sense. For instance, he says he's asleep, you got to watch the Bible, and truly the man is dead. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So why does Jesus talk like that? Because death does not have the same bondage in his mind as it does in yours. Okay? It, it is not what you think it is. And see, because you're on this side and the event is always weighed on very heavily, you take it in the negative tone rather than the positive tone. And this is what the devil aims for, is to get people fearful of something that's just a door. Okay? It is not something that's tragic like we, we look at and see. Because, see, the devil's biggest game is to get us fearful. God's desire is to get us in faith. I want you to believe me, okay? Remember what he says, if these things were not true, I wouldn't have told you that. Why, why is he doing that? Because he knows that sometimes when people see death, it draws conclusions in our mind. We're, we're shutting down things. And really, it's opening up a greater opportunity. Uh, well, we'll go there. Well, some of the things that were spun from Jesus in Matthew 24 was earthquakes. Earthquakes. In fact, they doubled in the last 30 years, and they quadrupled in the last 100 years. Earthquakes. Also, we have pestilence. Pestilence deal, of course, like, you know, the epidemic of, of AIDS, flus, sores, uh, sores um, H1N1, uh, COVID-19, uh, bird flu, swine flu, the reinsurgent of old uh, plagues, uh, the plague of, of the mumps, measles, scarlet fever, disease, uh, tuberculosis, cancers, brain diseases, etc. Now, I'm going to point to something. I won't be long on it, but I was sharing with even Brother Porter in my office. The earth is vomiting. Why? Because sin is so prevalent. And because sin being prevalent, the earth has made a decision. I will destroy anything that goes against God. Why? Because God made the earth. And the earth knows that it was not made to go through the torment of sin. Because see, sin is a killer. And because sin is a killer, the earth says, if you go against God, I'll go against you. Why? You came from the earth. And so immediately when we sin, there's a book um, a pastor had gotten many years ago. It was called None of These Diseases. And he found in the book that when people sin, that there are enzymes in the body that release poisons to kill you. That's why then the scripture says, the soul that sinned shall die. So what is God saying? You don't understand. Your effect of going against me warrants you death. You have a death warrant on your head. And this is why Jesus came. I hope you get the point. This is why Jesus came to break the warrant. Huh? See, the death was after you because you have a warrant on you. You were clothed in sin. And so when Jesus came, he eradicated it and he stepped in the middle of the thing to give you back your life. Oh, it's deeper than what I'm about to give y'all. But the point becomes, the earth, as I shared with Brother Porter, you can't, get a, you can't get away from the earth. It's everywhere you go. It's everywhere you step. Your breathing is oxygen. You're in this earth. Interesting, when we dealt with the, um, the corona, it was taking the breath because breath comes from God. Isn't that interesting? That the enemy would go after the thing that gives you life. And that's breath. And see, because God didn't breathe a whole bunch of times for us to live. He just breathed one time. Because that's all God has to do. God didn't have to make a force. All he had to do was make a tree. 
and a tree made of forest. See, God does everything by seeds. Everything he does is by seed. In the seed is a forest. Okay? He didn't make 100,000 people. He made one man, and all of a sudden everything is multiplied. Because everything God touches always multiplies. It does. Hello. And even, even the opening of your mind and to understand things, God is allowing you to understand that. The reason why you have the faculties of your mind, God gave you that. He wants you to know things. Amen. He doesn't want you ignorant. So if anybody telling you, you're not going to know that about God, you're not going to know this, you're going to know enough. I promise you that if you want to know him. If you don't want him, don't worry about it. You won't know nothing. You don't, you don't have to worry about it. Nobody got to beat you over the head. You just won't know anything about him. Okay. The great sign from the heavens, we, we see the, the blood moons, if you guys re recall, that they were in the air. The, these are, are, are things to point to certain uh, uh, prophetic things that happens to uh, a, a group of people. See, the Israelites were used to the moons. They, they, they followed that. That was a part of what they were taught. And so here the Bible gives us some understandings about the heavens, the suns, the moons, the stars, even the alignment that happened in September 2017. It happened once every 700 years. Study shows that there's been um, a much more increase in the solar systems. More things are going on. Activity is, is increasing. The seas, the waves are roaring. Tsunamis are, are killing hundreds and thousands of people. Again, I'm telling you, the earth is upset with sin. And so it has been authorized when we go against God to take you out. Some of us don't understand that, but there's some legal stuff that is with heaven and the earth. That's why in, over in one chapter, the Bible says that the earth is groaning for the sons of God to be revealed. Where the heck are you? Why aren't you taking your place? Why aren't you preaching the gospel? Why aren't you winning people to Jesus Christ? Because it's the only saving grace for the earth. Don't you get it? Don't you understand that earth, the earth spits up blood when it's killed innocently and tells, on, uh, tells God? This person died in vain. Why is there blood in the ground? Well, when you go to the first part of your Bible, what do you read about? You read about a guy named Cain. And you read about his brother named Abel. And you read of a tragic event that took place. And God tries to warn one man. He says, listen, you presented something the wrong way. But listen, if you do it right, everything will be all right. So why are you getting angry? We're going to use that word today. I believe anger is increasing in the last days. And that people are being mad over nothing. I mean, they will hurt you over nothing. Drive from a whole other state to come kill you because you don't look like them. That's hatred. That's hatred in the worst way. Yet, I don't hear enough preaching and teaching saying, we got to stop this. Because the earth is going to take us out if we keep allowing hatred to go on. First, we can and should, and, and we should deal with this. What can and cannot be known in the end times when we deal with prophecy? There are some prophecies that we're not going to know anything about. Listen at me. We're not. Even to try to figure it out. Like, for instance, this statement that Jesus makes. Um, nobody knows the time, but yet... There are indicators, okay? In other words, you may not know the exact time. And, and one of my best friends made a statement to me and said that a friend told him, there's no more prophecies that need to be fulfilled. They're all fulfilled. Now, that sounds good, but that's just not biblically true. And you have to be careful when people make a, an exact statement about something they feel uh, emotional about because they see much, so much stuff going on that their concerns are if people are dying like this and all this is happening, this must be the end. But can I tell you, these are only the aches and pains. You're not there yet. Well, how do you know, Pastor, when you get there? Because it will be happening so rapidly and so much, you won't be able to, be able to stand it. 
In fact, you'll lose your mind just watching the results even in your own community. You'll be running and trying to hide from all the things that are happening at once. We're not there yet, yeah. Are we there yet? Some of y'all feel like you are. You're around people that they sound like they're there right now. But we got to stay with the book. Listen at me. We got to stay with the book. Don't get caught up in the emotionalism that's happening with people. The Bible told us to look up, to keep our eyes focused on him. Not to get caught up in what we're seeing all around us. Because they're going to say all kind of stuff. And it's not coming from them. You need to know that. Quit trying to get mad at these people on, on the news and stuff. That they, they, they ain't their fault. It's a demon, y'all. His assignment is very true. I'm coming to kill, steal, and destroy. I'm going to take your mind from you. I'm going to take your kids from you. I'm going to take, take everything you got from you. But Jesus said, well, I oppose that. I came that you might have life and that life more abundantly. Amen. Are you hearing Now, the parable that Jesus gives in Matthew is very interesting. It says, in fact, I'm not going to have you turn it when you listen. Now, learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches have already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know the summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. Mm, or surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Now what is he saying? The prophecy that intends for Jesus to come back and all the things to happen, know this for sure. Nothing's going to happen without that happening first. Now, somebody would say, but pastor, with all the internets and all the things we have, more of the gospel is getting all over the place. That is true. But do you know there are still places it hasn't gotten to? What are you talking about? Just look at the people you talk to. A lot of them don't view the Bible. They don't hear the Bible. People are still getting born again that have never heard the gospel here in the United States of America. They have never heard the gospel. Now, they heard all kind of ideas of religion, but they did not hear the gospel. And we've got to be careful because some people think they're preaching the gospel. They're preaching humanism, okay, and secularism. They're even teaching wealth and, and all of that. But that's not the gospel. And you've got to be careful what you conclude to be the gospel. Oh, man, it's dangerous. And so many false prophets and teachers have gone out teaching things that people are gullible for because that's what they want to hear. I want to hear this. I didn't come here to hear about, you know, some prophecy being filled. I want to hear what's going to put some money in my pocket. So the church then has become a seminar for how to get wealth. I'm just being honest. But that is not the gospel. Now the gospel may preclude that it may help you get some finance, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It is a foregoing benefit when you seek God. See, the point is this. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Just don't get caught up in the things of your heart. Because, see, you can, you can present yourself to God like you're a very reasonable person, but really God knows you lying. You really only want, only want to get a girlfriend in the church. That's why you keep scoping the room. Because you really didn't come here to hear about him. You came to see who you could go home with. And let, let me say this. In the animal kingdom, the lion does not go after the strongest animal. He's waiting for the one that's way behind the rest of the group. You know why? Because it's an easy takedown. 
He does not have to work as hard as he would with the strongest one in the group. The devil's not interested in the strongest saint in here. He's looking at the weakest. Okay? He already knows that some of you have so, uh, are so fastened to the things of God, you're not going to be persuaded in any way different. So he will irritate you with the babies around you that don't grow. Why you ain't growing in all this time? Why you still uh, 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 fussing over the same stuff you should already be growing up about, about now? That'd be like your child. You raised them from a little kid and now they're, they're 25 and, and 30 years old and they still don't know how to go out and, and get a job because you didn't train them to do that. You did too much taking care of them and not training them that eventually you got to go. My dad wasn't that kind of man. I'm, I'm training you to leave. Oh, no, he, he was. I'm training you to, you're going to be leaving here, brother. And, and, and you're going to have to know how to pay your rent. Hello? You're going to have to know how to pay your phone bill, your light bill, and all these bills. He sat me down and showed me. He said, do you see these bills here? This, this one here. You're going to have to pay that. you got to pay this. My mother said, the main one you better pay is that rent. If you don't pay that rent, you ain't got no roof over your head. They can turn the lights off. They can shut the water off. You can go down the street and get some water. Hello? You can get a flashlight and walk around in the house. This is what my, this is what my mother said. But as long as you got a roof over your head, the rain can't hit you. Okay? Now, these people were training, me and my brother, y'all going to leave. Okay? I, I think I told you guys a story. My dad told me, he said, well, I tell you what, um, you're going to pay the car note. I'm going to go ahead and pay your insurance. Now, if you fail to pay the car note, I will not fail to pay the insurance. But you got to make sure you pay the car note. Okay. Dad wasn't playing. I lost a job, came home, and said, well, uh, I don't have that job. He said, how are you going to pay that car note? If I was you... I'd get back out there and find a job because, see, uh, I'm going to pay the insurance, but I'm not paying that car note. Are y'all listening? This is training. See, sometimes we, we patting our kids on the head, but we ain't trained them. Okay? Everybody ain't going to pat you on the head. Let me help you out. Somebody's going to try to bust you in the head. So, so I, I, I got to help you understand some valuable things before you leave my house. Well, what is Jesus doing? I, I'm trying to train you before the end shows up so that you're not caught off guard and looking all weird when you see certain things happening. That's called a good trainer. The only people caught off guard is the ones that didn't do no study. Y'all know who I'm talking about. You never applied yourself to the truth. All you did was hear about it, but you never activated any of it. And so when the circumstances of life start to show up and start to twist you by the neck and you wonder why everybody else ain't falling apart. You guys remember this word portion in the Bible? Uh, these folk wanted the other folks' oil. Remember that? They wanted, they, they wanted, they wanted to say, listen, you know, uh, uh, we need some oil and, 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 and so we can, you know, make sure we're we ready. And they said, well, we can't get you none at all. You have to go to the market and get it. But he may come back by the time we, well, that ain't our fault. But you ain't getting none at all. And guess what? When they went to go to the market, get it, he came back. And guess what? They left. What is he trying to tell you? You ain't got time to be playing games once you know the truth. Now, you want everybody to lie to you and tell you, oh, it's all good. It's all wonderful. That's like they're trying to tell you in America. It's all good, baby. Inflation is real. It's going after your cash. Yes, it is. And you're going to have to be wiser than you were the last time. I said, you're going to have to be wiser than you were the last time. You can't spend like you, okay, y'all ain't want to listen to me. You know, because you're still in that fairy, fairy go land. You know, everything is wonderful. Everything. No, it ain't. It's taking your cash. <laughs> and if, it, if it keeps up, it's going to try to take your mind. All right? Now, they're doing everything they can to, to see if they can get some reserves and do this. But the meantime, back at the ranch, what you doing? Uh, are you going to stay with Jesus? Because half folk, you know, they're going to leave Jesus and try to figure it out themselves. 
Think about what you tried to figure out yourself and what, what came out of that. I need some help. Now, I'm just going to be honest about Mike. I need some help because I ain't that smart. I know some of y'all geniuses. Y'all, you, you know, college, Joe College good. You know, you got it all together. You know where you at. You know where you're going. You just is lost. Hello. See, when somebody don't know something, you ask somebody who knows something. That's called wisdom. I don't know what I'm doing. You lived a lot longer than me. Can I ask you something? How did you make it through when there was a depression? Are y'all listening? Okay, because folk weren't getting work like, like they, you know, easy. It wasn't that easy. And they were taking whatever they could, and they were, they were learning. to. Can I help y'all with something? Remember in Acts, the Bible said they had all things common. They started learning to work together. See, the house of God is a wonderful place for us to come and, and fellowship and, and hear the word of God. But we might have to use this as a saving grace for everybody that attends this church. Y'all not hearing me. See, this is, this is real. This ain't, this, we talking about end times just, just a little bit, all right? So I'm just going to kind of make it real for you. If it, if it gets too serious, you're going to need somebody's help. That's why the Bible says you need to have some friends. Are y'all listening to me? Quit making enemies. Start making some friends. Well, I don't talk much. Well, you better learn to talk. Because when that stomach gets to growling, you better learn to talk. You better learn to say something. My mother used to make this statement. I don't know how true it is. But she used to make this statement. You know, we're having a hard time getting together, son. And, um, but I'm, I'm here to say this. God knows how to help us get together. Family members that don't talk to one another, I promise you, let it get bad enough. Oh, they're going to talk to each other. You know, I ain't going to ask them for no money. Let it get so low. Can, can you help me? What's going on? We out, we out of money. I ain't talked to you in years, I know, but I need your help. Mm. Okay. I ain't even halfway to where we're going to go. We just at the opening. We just at the opening, so y'all be good. At the same time, Jesus made it clear we cannot pinpoint the exact timing of the end of the world and his return. In Mark's gospel, the 13th uh, chapter, verse 32, it says this, But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. You should, you should write this down because there are people that are going to try to tell you they know the exact time. According to this, this is God's word. Pastor Mike didn't write this. Okay, this is Jesus saying, listen, let me help you out. Nobody knows. And I think I explained it to you one time before. One of the reasons why God doesn't give us that information, you know how we would do you know what we do? Well, we'd all go out. See, we, none of us would be in this church right now, even the group that's here right now. None of us would be here. We'd be out doing our thing, okay? We, whatever that is, we'd be doing it. But because some of us have an idea that he could return at any moment, we want to be ready. Any, it, it. I told you how I used to do when my daddy would, when mama would leave. My brother would always say, so uh, what time y'all come back? Father so said, well, I, I'm not really sure. But uh, we'll, we'll be back. But, 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 but what, what time, Dad? Well, I, I don't know, son. Uh, well, we'll be back. We'll be, we'll be back. My brother was crazy. As soon as they left the door, he, he jumped. I'm, I'm out. My father would return in 15 minutes, man. And I'm in the house, right? And he says, uh, so where's your brother? I said, that's a good question. He said, yeah, and I'm asking you, where is your brother? I said, I, I have no idea, man. Okay. Huh. When did he leave? You really want me to answer that? <laughs> he said, you ain't got to answer. It's okay. My father's sitting there whistling and carrying on. My brother comes strolling in. Hey, how you doing? Huh? Yeah, so you just leave when you want to leave, huh? 
we're going to take care of this little problem right now. Okay? Can I tell you something? That's the same thing you and I got to be careful of with God. Because he did not tell you when. Are we there yet? See, see in, in the back of the brain, no, nah, we ain't there yet. We, we got to be somewhere. In, 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 in the equation of the way everything's going, we got to be someplace. You cannot bypass from a pandemic that many people died and you got to view it. How did you escape? You hadn't taken no shot. How did you walk through the valley of the shadow of death? How did it not come on you? How is it that God bypassed you? When I see the blood, I will pass. I ain't here because of this striped shirt I got on. Don't think there was a casket that said it don't have Michael's name on it. God was the one who said, not now. But this pandemic hit and nobody knew it was coming. Bam. It moved so quickly through the, 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 the neighborhood and communities. There was no shot yet even developed. Was it an angel that was there protecting us? Something was going on. Because I'm still here. It's no joke. I've watched on the TV like you. I've I watched people line up. I've I watched them scared, nervous. And then I watched also a time when we were attacking and the Twin Towers came down and they showed Vegas. It was empty. Vegas. Nobody was there at the height of the day. Because we did not know, would it be another attack? We got, we got concerned. Soon as we felt like it was okay, we went to do the same things we did before. And in my opinion, we're doing it again. You ain't allowed to put on no mask. I mean, folk got angry, mad at a stupid mask that could either save your life. If I see the blood, I didn't mean to preach this part, but I'm just, I, I, I'm so, I'm, I'm so a mess with this whole project God's got me on. And I said, well, how are you going to stop me, man? after we talking about the brain. He said, because intelligent folk would understand with what you taught, that we have to deal with what's really going on. What's happening? Are you that lame brain to think that you did this by yourself? That you even dressed yourself, got yourself here, and God had nothing to do with it? You drove in a car that did, had all kind of knuckleheads around you, yet you didn't get hit? Are you out your mind? I understand why the devil wants to interrupt a guy like me. Because, you know, I ain't got no 15 million folk following me. But I'm crazy enough to preach exactly what I see. Because people don't need illusion preaching anymore. We need the truth. Why do we need the truth? The devil embarrassed this country with a lie. And millions and millions of people followed it. 
I mean, we all watched and looked at it. I said, I've never seen nothing so stupid in all my life. But yet, people in their consciousness accepted this to be the truth. You hold the truth every day. And can I help you out with something? A lie is so scared of the truth. That's why it has to keep lying. Truth don't have to say it but one time. I said, done with it. That lie's got to be penal for years. It's got to switch. It's got to make up something else to make it stand like it's really something else. The lie never needs, the, the, the truth never needs support. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. The truth can die and resurrect. You, you missed it. The truth can die and resurrect. Cause can I tell you something? You can never kill truth. A lie got to keep performing. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. After you tell a lie, you got to really work on the next part of the lie. You got to make that convincing, man. My father could see through it so quickly. Jesus says in, in Matthew 24, verse 3, he says, uh, what will be the sign, or the question, what will be the sign of your, your coming in the end of the age? Well, the disciples were concerned because Jesus had made statements. Okay, he had made statements that irked him a bit. You're talking about all this stuff breaking down and all these things will happen. What's going to be the sign of, of you returning? And so Jesus then goes through a litany of things, and he begins to explain to them. Um, in verse 21, he says, And there will, there, there will be great tribulation. There will be a great tribulation such as not even seen in the beginning of the world. Now, this, this is a, a different word when you put the word great on tribulation. Tribulation is different uh, in other passages that he's talking about, but he put a sizable word called great. In other words, this is something you will not be able to look past. Okay? Now, certain things won't catch our attention right here, right now. Okay? But let a bomb go off. Everybody in this room will get shaken up. Okay. Because that's an attention grabber. It, 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 it caught your attention. And sometimes God has to catch people's attention because we have this ability not to pay attention. Um, in, in my family, let me talk about my family. Um, my sons are just, they're kind of like me. We, we have this one track brain thing. When we are focused on something, we can't hear you. You can be talking, but we don't, we don't really hear you. You have to almost shake us. Hey, hey, what? Did you hear me talking to you? No, 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 I'm, I'm sorry I didn't. What were you trying to tell? Okay. God does the same thing because he knows we can get fasting on stuff. Okay? So he brings tremendous things to wake us up. I'm not going to go in every detail, but what then must be bef uh, before this, this great tribulation? The tribulation is a future period when the Lord will accomplish at least two aspects in his plan. Here it goes. He will complete his discipline of the nation of Israel. You find this in Daniel chapter 9 in verse 24. He will complete his discipline of the nation of Israel. Number two, he will judge the unbelieving, godless inhabitants of the earth. Now, you've got to read from Revelation chapter 6 to all the way to Revelation 18. You've got to read. Okay, you've got to read, y'all. 
In Daniel 24, we read this. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. It reads this. Seventy weeks have been declared for your people in a holy city to be finished, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make an atonement for iniquity, to bring into everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to, the, to appoint the most holy place. Now, I can break this down, but we're not going to do everything in it. He's trying to say, when we come to the place of the great tribulation, we will have seven years. Seven years. Now, they're broken down in three and a half years, okay? In segments in the three and a half years, different things take place. Now, if you're a good Bible student, you, you really have to understand this is very important to understand, even leaving on record. For other people that will have to absorb this, even if it's not our generation, a generation is going to face this. And I pray there's enough information on record for those who come to accept Jesus as their personal Savior. The expanded reads that same verse like this. God has ordered 100, 490 years. Seventy sevens weeks are even for people and the holy city. The following reasons to stop, here's the reason is, is for all this, is to stop the finish people from turning against God. In other words, there's going to come a time where God's going to stop folk from turning against him. Okay. Now, if the law of, of heaven was here, you would understand why. Honestly speaking, nothing goes against God. It can't. It's almost like somebody making a statement. The, the devil and God are in a conflict. Not really. No. The devil's in conflict. God is never in conflict. It is not a contest between God and the devil. We talk that way. But truly, there's no contest. I made you. How are you going to tell me how it's going to go? Okay, I'm going to tell you how it's going to go. And so God gives a time limit <laughs> to the operation of evil. And then he's going to shut it off. To put an end to sin. In other words, there will be a day when there will be no sin. None. It will not be there. We make this statement, we like this statement, there will be no ghettos in, in, in heaven. You know, ain't no trash cans and stuff in there. Okay. Um, to take away, atone for evil, iniquity. This is even premeditated sin is what we're talking about. To bring a good, the goodness and the continuous forever, everlasting righteousness. In other words, if God gets rid of sin completely, then we're going to have righteousness all the time. Now, for some people, that ain't going to be comfortable. You ain't feeling me yet. Because you enjoy more hell than you do heaven. <laughs> for a lot of news commentators, they ain't going to be happy. We can't, we can't report on nothing bad. Because ain't nothing bad. When the lion laid down with the lamb, how you going to... Who wants to report that? We need something ugly. Do you know bad news sell? Y'all do know that, right? It's, it's multi-millions of dollars in bad news. And sadly to report, Christians support it. To bring about a seal to the vision of the prophecy and the prophecy and to appoint a most holy place. In other words, that's actually in Jerusalem. Okay. 
where God sets up his, his whole millennial reign. So we, we come to a, um, a place when we come to the end where things do end. Okay, if, if, if um, we read that there's a season for everything, sometimes the commonness of our brains don't pick up that is also true about the things that are wicked, that they will come to an end. Okay. And that's why they got to perform crazily. That's why they got to go off. Because the real truth is they're about to come to an end. I know you don't understand that. Sometimes something will go crazy before it really gets good. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Just like this is just too stupid. Yeah, it's about to come to its end. Hang on. That, that harsh, that's bucking. It's bucking because it's about to stop. And this is what Jesus is saying. It's all going to come to an end that it cannot buck anymore. The length of the tribulation, again, like I said, is seven years. This is determined according to the understanding of the 70 weeks of Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. The great tribulation is the last half of the tribulation period, three and a half years in length. Go to, um, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me pick this up again. Matthew 24, um, 21. Matthew 24, 21. Uh, let me see if I can give you a little bit of this. For then there will be a great tribulation such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now. Nor ever shall be. He's trying to tell you that this is the conclusion of an event. This event will occur because it is the actual conclusion. It will stop. It will come to its end. Okay? I don't know about you, but as a Christian, that makes me feel really good to know that this is not going to always go on. Okay? Uh, old folks like making this statement. This too shall pass. Okay? This, this is going to pass. Because sometimes the way we talk, we talk like something. Uh, it, it's just not going to stop. You ever hear yourself and you, you're in the middle of an event and you're talking about it so deliciously that you're making it sound like it's going to always go on. Now, one, one truth about sickness is this. It can only do two, two things. Either the person gets healed, or the per actually three things. Um, the person gets healed, the person gets well, or the person dies. That's it. There's, there's nothing else, there's nothing else to, to go up against it. Now, of course, our heart's desire always is that the person gets well. Hello? That's what we want. We want to see the person well. And we want to see them be, to be able to do the same things they used to do, and that's good. But how many know sometimes after a sickness, the sickness leaves some residue? COVID has left residue. Did y'all know that? It's left people not being able to breathe like they used to and other complications. You know what that says to me? I remember one time I had a pinched nerve in, 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 in my finger. Uh, I still had the, the residue of it. It was a sore reminder of the event that I went through. Sometimes in your life, you need something to remind you what you just came out of. Okay? It wasn't a light thing. If you've been through cancer, if you've been through, you know, an event like that, that's not a light thing. That's a pretty serious deal. And to come out of that, you should at least have the, the, the word with all, who can I help? Because I've been through such a, you know, a serious event. It's, it's kind of uncommon for somebody to go through something that's detrimental not to want to share it with somebody else to help them. Okay? And, and that's when you know you've been to, through something that's really serious. When, you, when you've been through something really serious, you cannot help but want to tell somebody else about it. Jesus was trying to inform us about an event we had not felt. Okay? You hadn't felt it. And sometimes that, that is not easily received. Listen to me. Because it is, it, it is something that's coming later. So in our minds, because it's coming later, we put it off. You know, I ain't got to worry about that right now. 
You know, I used to say that about prophecy. Well, you know, uh, you know those events going to happen, but, you know, I, I ain't got to be thinking about it. Hello? Can I tell you why they thought about it so much in the, old, in the Bible? Because it helped them live a holy life. Oh, God help us. Some of us can't live holy and righteous without thinking he could show up. And the question is, what are you doing at the time he shows up? Now, with some folk, you think you're going to be able to give an excuse. But the Bible declares there won't be no excuse. All that you can do with something that's wrong and not right by God is repent, change. I'm not preaching this message so I'm popular. I got to help people watching and people sitting. It's time to repent. Quit trying to classify your Christianity based on what you're doing. You must do it off the life of Jesus, not you. People are going to try to tell Jesus, my sin is accepted because of this. It won't fly. It won't fly. That bird won't lift off the ground. And the reason why is when you try to cover sin, now you're in trouble with the sin. The only one able to cover sin is Jesus. You are accepting of his covering. Watch this. You're accepting of his covering is you making a decision to change. I must change. When I, when I would deal with my own sin, I don't know about everybody else, I, as a teenager, I used to run down to the altar <laughs> and, and repent before God and cry and and say, Lord, show me how to live holy. Show me, show me how to live right. And can I tell you something? When you, when you come humbly before God, God's willing to do that. You, you can't, listen, can a man take fire in his bosom? You, you can't handle it. God's already, he's already a step ahead of the stuff. All you got to do is follow the script, just like we're doing right now. We, we got to stay with the book. If the book says this, quit arguing with it. That's casting down imaginations. See, you, you're not going to argue with God. You're going to agree with him. If two of us shall agree concerning anything, here it comes, it shall be done. It ain't going to be done if you disagree with God. Just like I'm trying to tell you about the earth. The earth is going to wipe you out because you oppose God. You went against God's will. And because you went against God's will, you tried to argue at the, at the court, well, wait a minute, you got to understand my circumstance. I already did something for your circumstance. What did you do? I died for it. You just didn't qualify my death. I know that's hard for people to, to deal with. But see, if Jesus did the dying and the bleeding and the, all the stuff, somebody has to qualify it. It's called faith. Faith, let me give you James. James says... You can show me your faith by your mouth, but I need to see your faith by your actions. Are you understanding what James said? Now, James is Jesus' brother. So James was the type of person, just because you could run a good game, it ain't going to work with me. I got to see something that is tangible about your faith. This, this is hard for some people. If the Holy Ghost said to you, I need you to leave from this situation and do this now. Would you do it? It's quiet in the room. So I can imagine what y'all thinking online. Because, see, we want to straddle the fence. There was a church in the book of Revelations that was lukewarm. And I'm going to tell you something. There's an anointed church, and there's a church that's not anointed. Now, hold on before you get into a building. I'm talking about you. The church is not a building. The church is you. Either you are on Jesus' side fully, because I'm going to help you out. If you're not fully on his side, you're trying to straddle the fence. Now, some folk will say to me, Pastor, I'm fully committed to Jesus. Not according to the, what the book is saying. Remember, we got to go by the specifications of the book, not you. 
Okay. You, you've got to go with the book, y'all. When you sit down and take that communion table and you drink of that, remember what I told you. You're either drinking death or you're drinking life. You're eating death or you're eating life. I said before you, death and life. I'm telling you today, choose life. Why did he say that? Because he knows in our conscious minds, we pick up death more than we pick up life. Why? You've been around it all your cotton-picking existence. And you're not aware that you live amongst the dead. They got more movies on TV about the dead than they do the lies. Isn't that amazing? So the devil's trying to hint to you, you know, I'm going to kill you, right? You, you know, I'm, subliminally, I'm trying to tell you, I'm, you know, I'm going to take you out, right? A walking dead. Why are live folk trying to walk around dead folk? I, I, I don't understand that. I mean, in, in, in any rational thinking, what does that have to do with you? You're trying to live. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. I want you to live, not die. And then you got to watch the, the character people you're around. Do they talk more life to you? Do they talk more death to you? And how many times do you say, I agree with that? And they just told you about some death crap, and you just accepted it. And guess what? You're agreeing with something you had no process of thought. You didn't think about nothing that's going on. Some of us waddled into sin just as, just as wide open and just claim, oh, the glory of God. The glory of God ain't on that. Where's the glory of God on sin? Show me that in the Bible. It's not. God does not anoint sin. Okay. Well, I don't know why pastor's talking about that. I do wait until I get to the end of this stuff. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Because people want to pronounce the anointing without God. I'm anointed by God. No, you're not. <laughs> you're not anointed by him. Why? Because you didn't do what he said. See, you think the anointing is emotions. That has nothing to do with it. The anointing, the, the anointing has nothing to do with excitement. Did you know that? The anointing has to do with results. Results. In other words, when you lay hands on the sick and they recover, that deals with results. That result don't come because of you. It comes because of God. And he's looking at a humble spirit that he can work through. Ooh, we quiet. I like it. But we got to think, y'all. Okay. And, and, you know, you, please don't get mad at me. People look at me when I'm teaching like this and they get sleepy. I know why. Truth is hard. Truth ain't like lies. Lies build you up. <laughs> and you know that's a lie. That's a flat lie. Hello? Truth will tell you right, right now. Let's take a look at each other in the mirror. I thought I looked like that. Do you know you don't? <laughs> what? The mirror's telling you what? The truth. The Bible's called the perfect law of liberty. Did you know that? It's a mirror. You look in it, and you get to see what you really look like. Woo-wee. Let me back up. Because <laughs> I'm really seeing myself now. Yeah. Yeah. You're seeing yourself without the mask. Isn't it interesting we have to use a mask? God, God's saying, I want to cover you up. And look, notice what he's covering. The mouth. <laughs> I believe it my wife already knows where I'm going uh, look at Matthew 24 our time is going y'all uh, Matthew 24 look at verse 29 uh, to 30 let me get to uh, 30 there Matthew uh, 24 29 through 30 watch this immediately after the tribulation of those days the son of man appeared in the sky and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming in the clouds of the sky with power and great glory in this passage he defines the great tribulation as the beginning and the revealing of the uh, abomination of, of desolation now the abomination of desolation deals with the antichrist we'll get with him 
a little bit as we go through this. And then also, in verse 15, the ending of Christ's coming. One of the, the, the most powerful parts of this, in this tribulation thing, is the birthing of Jesus actually coming. But he's not coming without there being the tribulation. That's going to have to happen. If he had to have the cross before he got to be uh, back in, in the glory, we have to have tribulation before he appears. Are you understanding my point? See, we want the good. We just don't want the bad. But that ain't the way God going to allow this to go. Joseph was not awarded to go ahead and run all of the stuff without going to prison, without being lied on, without being dumped in a hole by his brothers. Ain't that something? But at the end of it, he got his reward. So you might go through some stuff. Don't misunderstand what Pastor's saying. You might go through some stuff. But if you're doing it for Christ's sake, it's going to come out with some good stuff on it. Don't worry about it. If you're doing it for the right reason, if you're doing it because you want to glorify God. See, <laughs> the godly self suffer persecution. If you're preaching Pastor Mario to the, the crew of people and they just don't want to hear about Jesus, it's okay. It may fall on deaf ears with that crew. That's okay. But there's another group that as soon as they hear it, they're going to just light up. Because God knows the hearts of people. He knows a church that really wants to reach people for Jesus Christ. He really knows that church. And then he knows the fakes that are just all they want to do is analyze and build up their flesh. That's all. And do nothing at all. And I don't know about y'all. I believe all this was happening for one reason. To separate the sheep from the goat. To get rid of the phonies so we could finally have the real stuff. Real church is not people jumping around and falling out. That's not real church. That's people that just like to be emotional because they can't do it nowhere else. How do you know? As soon as they get back in the situation, they're cussing like they used to. So all that jumping around in the church and the screaming for Jesus, that didn't mean nothing. No, it didn't. That was just an emotional thing. And finally, it kind of reminds me of my grandmother. We were at our, my mother's church. And, and my grandmother was really showing off in that service. And, you know, I didn't do a, a lot of emotional things as a little boy. I just watched her. I was like, what's wrong with my grandmother? I mean, she was really having a time today. And my mother was screaming. They both were screaming. You know, I'm like, both of these ladies just going crazy. And so when we got back in the car, and on the way home, my grandmother said to my mother, said, we really had them going today, didn't we, Tinky? And now I'm sitting in the car, I'm hearing this. And I'm thinking, so all y'all was doing just, that wasn't real. It wasn't real. And can I tell you something? We have people that do it in church. They crying. You see them crying. It ain't real. It's just another show. Well, it's almost like me when the lady kept asking me if I was born again. She said, Michael, you want to be born again? I said, yeah, I'm already born again. She come back and asked me next week, Mr. Michael, you born again? I said, yeah, I'm born again. <laughs> you know why I kept saying that? Because I didn't want it to bother me. I didn't want her to try to preach to me about Jesus. I didn't want to hear all that. Okay? I've been raised in church all my life, and I did not want to hear somebody preaching to me about Jesus. I didn't want to hear it. And this lady, I, she, her little house was right next to the church. The church was here. Her little house was right there. And so every time I see it, I go the opposite way, and she come out, Michael, come here. I said, oh, Lord, man. She said, Michael, you, you give your life to Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> Just lie? Yeah. Uh-huh. I did that. Finally, one Friday night, I'm down at the church. The girls asked me to come hear them sing. And I, I said, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come here and hear them sing, and then I'm out. I'm a jet. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm out. All of a sudden, the girls finished singing, and the guy come up to preach, had his notes. He said, I got all my notes here ready to preach this message to you. And, and the Lord told me I'm not supposed to preach. Some dude made a statement saying that he didn't want to hear no preaching, just asked him to give his heart to Jesus. Would you please do that tonight, please? It was me. I'm shaking in the chair. <laughs> Asking myself a question. How did God know? He knows everything. That night I gave my heart to Jesus, and that little lady said, so you was lying. <laughs> you was just lying. Little heathen. <laughs> 
And she was so beautiful. I mean, she, she just loved me. She was happy that I gave my life to Jesus. She said, you know, it don't matter. You gave your life to Jesus now, Mike. Everything is different. Everything is different. I said, it was so simple. She said, because God don't make nothing hard, Mike. People do. People make it hard to serve God. And when I take you through prophecy, and it's going to be a lot of little things I'm going to take you through. Can I tell you something? It ain't going to be hard. It ain't going to be hard. It's going to be so simple. Some of you will look at it and say, what? That is so beautiful. That is just, that is just beautiful, Pastor. Yeah. Because God wants you to know. He's not trying to hide something in Scripture for you not to know. You know who's doing that? Theologians. They're trying to make it so spooky and weird and, you know, it's like, man, huh? Even when I was in Bible college, sometimes I scratched my head and say, did that make sense, that part right there? Because I don't really understand what that's talking about. Because I wanted to know the truth. And can I tell you something? Anybody in this room that has a desire to really know God, he wants you to know him. He's not trying to keep you from him. He really isn't. The only one doing that is the devil. In your flesh, your flesh, according to Romans 8, your flesh don't agree with God. It hates it. It hates that it has to submit to God's way. But how many know every time you submit to his way and you see the results, you're like, huh, this was the best thing I, I could have done. Amen. But now getting there sometimes, it's just like the treadmill to me. I don't mind that it's sitting in the family room. I just hate I have to see it. I don't mind that it, it, it can help me, you know, lose some weight. And that's, that's wonderful. I just can't stand that I got to get on it. Now, once I'm on it and I'm past my numbers, I feel like I achieved something. But here's what my thoughts do. You got to get back on here tomorrow. And then after that day, I got to get back on it the next day. And some days, I psych myself out so bad about it. I'm like, you know what? Forget you. You don't mean nothing to me. And I get to walk in. I said, but I really can't stand you. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand that I got to deal with you. And can I tell you something? Half of the problem, here it is, is here. It's just in the mind. Somebody telling you you can't do something, ingraining that in you when you were young, you can't be this, you can't do that, that's a ripoff. It's an assignment from the devil. You, listen, God put himself in you because you qualify. Don't you get it? Watch this. Greater is he that's in you. The devil can't do nothing about once God gets in you. He can't do nothing about it. He's so upset because if you discover how great he is in you, there ain't nothing you won't go and attack. I'll attack. David told, told Goliath, I'm taking you out. He's a teenager. Where did this boldness come out of a teenager to a man that's supposed to be skilled? Huh? David recognized God is much greater than everyone, Pastor Jerry here. Just want to thank you all for viewing in, all the viewers that tuned in. Uh, today to hear the word of God from our senior pastor, Pastor Mike Arnwine. We hope that uh, there was something that was said as he gave the message that was uplifting, that blessed you, that encouraged you. And so we just want to let you know that we appreciate you. We also want to say that any way that you would desire to be a blessing to us, you could do that through tithes and offerings to our website avpwcc.org. And in turn, we also, if you have any needs, you know, prayer requests, we have a prayer request section in there also that you could uh, make your request and we will pray and keep that prayer up until it is completed and you can contact and let us know that you got the prayer. And so we just, again, want to thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you very much. Hey, tune in next week. Thank you.